May 17, 18, and 19. Oh, my God, at the cathedral is Pentecost weekend, that Friday night soaking service, a soaking service, a soaking service, where we enter into the presence of the Lord. We are praying. Worship is happening. Bishop William Murphy, uh, not three, two, <laughs> two, is leading that service along with myself. And then on that Saturday, May 18th, doors open at 11 and we're soaking, soaking, praying, praying, praying. But it's going to be the workshops. The workshops, glory to God, are going to be amazing. I'm teaching a Holy Spirit in the fivefold ministry. Read the resurgence of the fivefold ministry. Uh, of course, Bishop is teaching a Holy Spirit in prayer. Pastor Rochelle Wilson, Holy Spirit and your financial sustainability. You have to remember that the church at Pentecost was not a pro people. Houses, lands, investments. So we got to talk about how we will sustain it. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Holy Spirit and uh, the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Uh, there's uh, Holy Spirit and African Pentecostalism. What it looks like. The, his the history of African Pentecostalism. Dr. Janine Hyman is with us. So it's just going to be full of the natty. I was praying for you this morning. Praise God. It's just going to be full all day. It's open doors open at 11. And we go until about 6, 7 in the evening on Saturday. Then we come back Sunday morning, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. We open the doors. No doors open at 9. Service starts at 10 on Pentecost Sunday. And we go all day until the Lord gets finished with us. Hey, I'm Bishop Coletta Javon. I'm a pneumatologist, among other things. And I am welcoming you and encouraging you to be at the cathedral for Pentecost weekend. That's May 17th, 18th, and 19th. It's the week after Mother's Day. So make your reservations. Get, your, get yourself to Detroit by bus by uh, wagon. <laughs> if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you desire a refilling, whatever is on your heart, healing, deliverance, freedom, there's going to be the activation of the gifts of the Spirit. So please come. Dr. Reginald Charleston, good morning, Bishop. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're joining us in the evening replay, please put in the chat replay, and we're going to be there responding to you as well. Listen, <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that you've joined us. Coming up the timeline, thank you. Hey, Rod, what's up? What's up, favor for life? God bless you, living waters. And those of you that are joining us on Instagram, thank you. Some uh, There are some, some reels on TikTok as well. <laughs> so if you join us on YouTube, all of the replays are there for the last four years. Please make sure that you subscribe. And uh, you get our notifications so that when new content is uploaded, you can do that. Amen. All right. I want to talk uh, this morning about something that we've started. <clears throat> Speaking in tongues, God's spiritual language to us that was birthed uh, in Pentecost in that upper room. Uh, but I also want you to now move to the next space and begin to prophesy. Mm. I want you to write in the chat, I shall prophesy. I want you to write that in the chat. I love to praise. Good morning, living waters. <laughs> God bless you. Then that Sunday, we just got preaching and teaching and singing and dancing and just all kinds of wonderful things that are happening. Pastor Janard Lex is going to be with us that Pentecost Sunday. He's going to be bringing his people and bringing the word and prophesying to us. Pastor Folsom, Mary Newton, I shall prophesy. Jonathan Bowl, of course, is home. Reggie, Regina, God bless you, Adams. Dr. Margaret Crosby, God bless you, Pastor. Angela Wallace, I shall prophesy. Put that in the chat. 
And while you're doing that, would you like, tag, and share? Let's 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 sh share this right quick on your page and tag about 20 people and get them in here. Hey, Hillary and Garland, I shall prophesy. Shonda Hill, yes. Amen. I shall prophesy. Put that in the chat. I shall prophesy. <clears throat> I shall prophesy. This is the book that I'm reading. I'm reading on my way to Pentecost, on my way to Pentecost, The Beauty of Spiritual Language by Pastor Jack Hayford. He's gone home to be with the Lord now, but his work lives forever. We're also studying Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. I love books and I love recommending books. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. This is the school of the Holy Spirit, folks. <laughs> the school of the Holy Spirit. So we we have books. <laughs> I said, we have books. Uh, Going to start this as well, people of the Spirit. Jack Hayford again, Spirit Feel Life Bible Study Series. For those of you that want to open up Bible studies in your home, or you want to, uh, you teach in prisons, or you want to teach your particular people, whether it's your choir, your usher board. These are books that I recommend so that we shall be able to all kind of know the same thing. I love this book because uh, this book, it's going to probably be our next book in, in uh, Ministers in Training, People of the Spirit. And this has, it's a workbook. And so if you need Sunday school materials, pastors, uh, you want to do your men's fellowship or you want to do your ladies fellowship, we're going to be studying it uh, very soon after Pentecost in our Tuesday night uh, Bible study so that we can really, really maximize Pentecost. Ooh, ooh. I shall prophesy. So uh, the last time that we were together, we were talking about uh, interpretation, interpretation. And I want to reiterate, I'm reading that book as well. Yes, Peg West, yes. Angie says, show the books again. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Y'all tell me what to do. I'm just a teacher. Here we go. The Beauty of Spiritual Language. Somebody put it in the chat for me. Go right there to Amazon and various spaces. Hallelujah. The beauty of spiritual language. The beauty of spiritual language. Unveiling the mystery of speaking in tongues. Again, by Jack Hayford. Jack, and we're going to be looking at chapter seven today. Also, in our Bible study on Tuesdays, you join us. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker by David Hernandez. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. Holy Spirit, the bondage breaker. Strongholds, thoughts, emotions. Woo! It's delicious. And again, if you want a Bible study, curriculum kind of book, small group, uh, your business group, your choir group, your worship team, your usher board, this is, this is a series People of the Spirit, people of the Spirit, hallelujah, study guides, study guides. I don't just, I don't just talk about it. I read, I study, I get deep down in it. Hey, Gloria Hicks, God bless you, James Shelton, the beauty of spiritual language. Thank you so much, Veronica West Powell. Good morning, Cathedral. Good morning. You want to be in the beauty of spiritual language. That's by Jack Hafer. And I hope by now you all have your new, the new Spirit Feel Light Bible. Again, Jack Hafer. Spirit Feel Light Bible. If you're going to buy another Bible, get this one. I have it in the NIV, which is my, my favorite translation, NIV. I like New Living. I like uh, all of the new ones, but this is my absolute favorite uh, translation. So when we were talking about prophesying, we're talking about interpretation. 
we were talking, we're talking about good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If you're coming in on the replay, Evangelist Akiba, God bless you, Sonia. Let's go, let's go. Uh, if you are keeping up with the lessons, you know we started talking about speaking in tongues and interpretation. Speaking in tongues and interpretation. And so you begin to do this in your personal prayer time. All right. That's where you begin to pray in the spirit. Get my books here. Begin to pray in the spirit. And that's where you begin to become proficient in your interpretation. But don't wait for that. Uh, I want you to realize that once the baptism of the Holy Spirit has occurred, I shall prophesy. That's right, now, Freda. Thank you, Annie Barr. Yes, Pastor Folsom. Overseer Lenita. Thank you, Camilla Cook. Yes, Pastor William, William Lamone. I think I saw Mama Pearl and some of some of you, Dr. Aqua. She's putting it in the chat there. Thank you so much. Once you begin, once the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you begin to Speak in your spiritual language. Ooh, it's so delicious. Nothing like it in the world, nothing. When that begins to happen, you also have access to all of the gifts. Botswana is on South Africa, yay! <laughs> Dr. Elder Sherry Henderson, God bless you joining us. I shall prophesy. What's up, though, in Detroit? <laughs> Come on, Dean. Oh, God bless you, Mother Evangelist. Teresa Moss, Mother Boss. I shall prophesy. Chris, Chris, all shall speak with tongues until all have heard. Once that begins to happen, now you're tapped in. The, the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is the gateway to supernatural giftings, supernatural giftings, all right? And so once that baptism in the Holy Spirit occurs, that is when all of the spiritual gifts that come by the Holy Spirit are activated in your life. Now, I want you to understand, this is not just about you. It is about the edification of the church. Edifying the church, I shall prophesy. So the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues now is access. It's the gateway. Again, the baptism in the Holy Spirit that happened on the day of Pentecost came with tongues. The baptism in the Holy Spirit at Cornelius' house came with tongues. The baptism in the Holy Spirit in Samaria came with tongues and prophecy. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, as Paul was going up the road to Ephesus, Acts 19, came with tongues and prophecy. Dr. Patricia James, it is the gateway. It's the evidence, but it's the gateway in to the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are diversities of activities. There are diversities of applications. But it's all the same spirit. And 1 Corinthians 12 and 7 says, But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So it's not just about whether or not you have your spiritual language or you speak in tongues. It is about profiting the church, increasing, edifying, building up the local church. So when we say there's great praise and worship, there's great prayer, there's great preaching, there's great teaching, we should add also to that. And there's a great demonstration of the Spirit's power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody put that. Every pastor, every leader, you should, you should encourage, you should nurture, you should cultivate, you should speak 
to and help to enhance a culture where the people of God in your care feel free to operate in the gifts of the spirit. Oh, Rabbi Sika. <laughs> Come on, Peg. Absolutely. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Oh, I love it. I love that old warm one. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. You should encourage, and I want to say that to us. We should not be afraid of the culture that encourages the body to function in the supernatural. We can't be afraid of that. We must enhance the culture. We must encourage. We must give people the freedom and permission to prophesy, to lay hands on the sick, to speak in tongues, to sing in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must, Kimberly, we, we, we must take away the fear. We must take away the fear of ministering to those who, who are not in pulpit ministry. We must minister to them. Good morning, Your Grace, Bishop Ward. So glad to have you. So honored. Uh, to have you. We must encourage the operations of the gifts of the spirit, folks. It's not just sing, pray, preach. There is a demonstration of the spirit's power. According to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter number two, I didn't just come to you in words of knowledge and preaching. I came to you in a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Glory to God. That is the word of the Lord to the New Testament church. And, and that is the culture that we must encourage. <laughs> we must encourage that. We must teach to that. We must let people know that they can prophesy. You can lay hands on the sick body life. We must encourage that there is counseling and counsel and comfort among the body. We must cultivate a culture, oh God, Ooh, to encourage and nurture. Oh, yes. Come on, Hazel. Thank you, Sister Hazel. That operates in the supernatural gifts of the spirit. Why are we so afraid of that? Why are people in 2024? still afraid to speak in tongues and interpret? Why are people still nervous about whether or not I'm going to be a member, whether or not I'm going to get in trouble? If I feel an impression to speak the word of the Lord, why do people still feel hesitant and tentative about giving a word to the body? Because we are not nurturing we're not nurturing a culture where the gifts of the spirit are fluid, flowing, and in operation by the body. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for putting those books in. Thank you, Dr. Aqua. Thank you. Get these books, folks. Cultivate it in your life. Cultivate speaking in tongues. Cultivate prophecy. Cultivate interpretation. Cultivate laying on of hands. You do it. You begin to read the books and find books, Google books, Amazon, Google, Google books that preach and teach you how to have confidence and boldness in the demonstration of the spiritual gifts. Not that you just speak in tongues and stop there, but that you prophesy, that you lay hands on the sick, that you that you that you heal yourself, that you break bondages, you destroy yokes, you speak prophetically to strongholds and thoughts and emotions, and you command sickness and disease 
to lead the body of Christ, to lead your body, to lead anyone's body that you speak to. So I, I am all about cultivating the culture and cultivating an environment where everybody in the church has the freedom and the boldness and the training and the equipping to use the spiritual gifts to profit the church, to edify the church. Oh, Baba Mama Shika. Uh, Jennifer Jenkins says, I remember being a teenager and in a church meeting, the spirit of prophecy hit me. And a few people, wow, said to me, that's a nice speech. It grieved me because they had no idea that it was a prophetic warning of what ended up coming years later. My God, absolutely. 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 Because again, many churches are still cessationist church churches. They believe in shouting and dancing, but not the gifts of the spirit. And it shouldn't be foreign to us. It shouldn't be odd. It shouldn't be like, oh my God. Oh, that, that shouldn't be odd. It should be normal. It should be normal. We must dispel biblical ignorance concerning the Holy Spirit. We must, we must dispel the ignorance as the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. <laughs> Paula Mata joining us, coming up the timeline. Pastor Rita Bill, Angie B coming up the timeline. Come on now. So 1 Corinthians 12 says that the manifestations of the Spirit are given to each one for the profit of all. For to one, the word of wisdom is given through the spirit, another, the word of knowledge, another, the gift of faith, another, the gifts of healing, another, the working of miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, different kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. Wow. And what does that say? That says that all of these giftings should be in operation in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, when it comes to praying in the spirit, when it comes to praying in the spirit, when it comes to you activating prayer, Evangelist Ruthie, activating your prayer tongues, activating your prayer, praying in the spirit, this should be every day. This should be what you do every single day day. Every single day, you should be praying in tongues. Every single day, you should be zealous for spiritual gifts. You should be excited. It should not be obsolete. It should not be foreign. And it should not just be the preacher. Now, first Corinthians 14. Now, he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. Now, I just saw, uh, I think uh, somebody evangelist to keep up, say, even when you're praying in tongues, you can heal your own body. Praise God. You can heal your own body. That just praying in the spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, it heals, it brings healing, it, it brings uh, a pH balance in the body. It heals your own body. So you must pray in tongues Every day you edify yourself, you build yourself up, you, you strengthen your core, you strengthen your discernment, you strengthen your spiritual ears when you pray in the Holy Spirit. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you begin to release healing virtue. You begin to release the power of the Holy Spirit, not just in your body, but in your atmosphere. You got a little situation that's tense. You got some, some situations going on that have um, uh, conflict, turmoil. Pray in the spirit out loud. Pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. Dr. Patricia James, we know. Pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. 
You can pray in tongues until you heal your body. You can pray in tongues until you heal the atmosphere. You can pray in tongues until everything that is in the environment that's contrary to God begins to line up. Praying in your spiritual language is a very powerful tool for the edification of the body and for the agitation of hell. <laughs> you want to agitate the devil? Start singing and praying in the spirit. You want to agitate demons and witches and warlocks? Start praying in the Holy Ghost. I walk through my house every day. Ooh, and I be praying in tongues out loud. I pray in tongues out loud in my house, in my car. Ooh, there's a peace in my home. There is a, 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 a solace, a respite, a place of, of peace, the shalom. I'm praying in the tongues all the time. I'm cooking. I'm praying in the spirit. I'm in the shower. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm walking through the house, praying in the spirit. Sometimes I just stand in the house. I love my house so much. I just stand in and start praising God in tongues. Sometimes I sing loud in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and it heals the atmosphere. It heals the environment. So when you start walking in your house and you're praying in tongues, you walk into a place of peace. You walk into an environment that's regulated by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Praying in tongues can heal your body, your liver, your kidney, your blood pressure, your diabetes, whatever is going on in your body. Praying in tongues has much power. Hallelujah. And then when you are in the church, then you must seek to prophesy. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I want you to go to verse 12. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 12. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel, that you seek to excel, Therefore, verse 13, let him who speaks in tongues pray that he may interpret. Please look at that. Please. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12 and 13. So when, when, the, when it comes up, sorry, y'all, when it comes up that, that you have uh, to have an interpreter, my constant teaching to you is then you become that. You do it. You interpret. You interpret. First Corinthians chapter 14, 12 and 13. Paul is setting order and setting protocol for the gifts of tongues and prophecy in a local church. It is already assumed that the church at Corinth speaks in tongues. It's already assumed in the context that the spiritual gifts are in operation. Amen. And so when you are when you are reading <laughs> from Corinthians, the first epistle of Corinthians. You must already know that this is a charismatic church. Now, what does that mean? The charisma, the gifts of the spirit, the grace gifts of the spirit are in operation. It's a charismatic church. Charismatic church is a church, a New Testament church, where the gifts of the Holy Spirit are believed to be continuing and fluid in operation, all right? So the Corinthian church was already a charismatic church, all right? The charisma, the kids, charis, the charis, gifts of grace are in full operation. Woo, Rabbi Kashkatapa. <laughs> Woo, 
Ooh, by my seek adorable Oshkete de 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 Osaya. Ooh, I love these testimonies. Watch this. Yesterday, I left home and left the stove on. Ooh, ooh. When I realized what happened 30 minutes later, I prayed in tongues all the way home. And my daughter, when I got home, the food had not burned at all, barely heated up. Good God Almighty. Hey, come on, come on. Dr. Aqua says, years ago, I had surgery. I was in tremendous pain, of course. Right after the surgery, I was in bed speaking in tongues. Once I was healed, I had a dream of that moment. And I didn't know if it was a dream or it did happen. So I began to ask people who I saw in the dream, did it happen? And one by one, they said, no. The last person I asked said, yes, you were speaking in tongues. I didn't understand what you were saying, but I prayed and cried with you, my God. Now, listen to this. The Bible says that tongues are a sign to the unbeliever. Tongues are a sign to the unbeliever. Tongues are a sign. Wow. <laughs> to the unbeliever, tongues are a sign. And so uh, when someone is speaking in tongues, you must realize that this is God's sign. God's sign, supernatural sign, that he's in your midst. Praise God, that he is in your midst. And when he is in your midst, anything can happen, praise God. And so I want you to become more comfortable with praying in the spirit. I want you to become more comfortable with praying in tongues. And I want you to become more comfortable with interpretation. It should not be said in 2024 that you've never spoken in tongues and interpreted. It should not be said because you have already perfected it every day, praying in the spirit and praying with your understanding. Praise God that we all will prophesy. So let him, verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 14, let him who speaks in tongues, verse 13, pray that he may interpret. <laughs> Woo, come on, Lori, come on, come on, come on, pray. So when you talk about, oh, man, it wasn't no interpreter, it wasn't no, we shouldn't be speaking in tongues. The same person who's speaking can interpret. Now, you, you, it should be your lifestyle. You should be praying in the spirit. You should be hearing from God in your prayer time. This is where you began to interpret. So if you pray in tongues, if you speak in tongues, if you're praying every day in your spiritual language, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now you say, Lord, I desire to interpret. Now, it may start first come straight out of your mouth or it may come straight into your knowledge, your knowing. And you have to speak it out of your mouth. Or there may be a bubbling up in your belly, maybe a bubbling up in your belly and it whooshes out of your mouth. All right? Don't get locked into how. Don't get locked into how. Just get in, in the habit of doing it. Just get in the habit of doing it. It may come whoop, straight out your mouth. Or it may come up out of your belly where you feel a you feel a bubbling, you feel a pressuring, you feel something coming up out of your mouth, out of your belly. And then it, you push it out of your mouth. Praise God. Or it may just come straight, just straight out your mouth. Or it may be an impression that you feel in your mind. You feel an impression. All right. Like everything else, you must practice. You must become proficient. If you don't ever do it, you'll never get proficient. Hallelujah. 
Don't get locked into the how. Get locked into doing it. Prophesy. You prophesy. You pray in tongues. You interpret. 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 Now, not every time you pray will there be an interpretation because, again, you're speaking between you and God. But I would say probably about 80% of the time, there's most times interpretation. And the more you do it, the more proficient, the more comfortable. And you do that in private. That's where you begin to speak first. You speak first at home. All right? Now, the more proficient you are, the more comfortable you are, the more aware, the more mindful that you are, that, wow, I feel an impression. Now, sometimes you may not even pray in tongues first. You may begin to pray in English, but it's prophetic. And that's how God downloads it. I don't want you to get caught in like step one, two, three. I want you to be more freer than that, right? When you pray in tongues, your spirit is praying. When you pray in tongues, your spirit is praying. When you pray in tongues, your spirit is praying. Your mind is not praying. Your spirit is praying. Your innermost person, the real person that you are, is praying, right? So when you pray in English or whatever your indigenous language is, because we have people here, your indigenous language is not English. But when you're praying in your indigenous language, then your mind is engaged. Your intellect is engaged. Your thought processes are engaged. But when you pray in the spirit, the Bible said the mind is unfruitful. So you're not praying from a place of understanding, David Wilson. You're not praying from a place of intellectualism. When you pray in the spirit, when you pray in tongues, your spirit is praying. Your spirit prays. Now, some of you don't even know where your human spirit is. Your human spirit, if you read my book, <laughs> you got to read my book, Living with the Advantage. I start off with Knowing your human spirit, Dr. Pastor Sheila Donald Johnson. Oh my God, I'm so glad to see you the other day. Knowing your human spirit. So you have to locate your human spirit. Your human spirit is where Holy Spirit lives, where Holy Spirit resides, right? Now, you have to locate your human spirit. That's where Holy Spirit has come to take up residence in your life when you have put your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit is for everyone. Everybody has access to the Holy Spirit, not just Christians. However, those of us who have professed Christ as our Savior, we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is a grown man, so he doesn't live in your heart, but he lives in us by his spirit. <laughs> Amen, Pastor. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Sheila. I want y'all to catch this. Now, hallelujah. Yes, Betsy Williams says, when I first received my spiritual language, I only had two words. All right, Pastor Cherry said, keep praying. And your language will develop absolutely ba 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 ba, just like a baby. Ma ma ma, da da da, wa wa, poo poo, ba ba. It's language, folks. Now I, with my greedy self, when I first received, I was a full three days. <laughs> I saw someone Paula said when I woke up from surgery, I was speaking in tongues. Absolutely, me too, because your spirit didn't go to sleep during surgery. Your spirit was making intercession for you while you were being operated on. See, because it doesn't require your intellect. 
It doesn't require your mind. It doesn't require your cognition to participate in speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. Paul says, when I pray in the spirit, my mind is unfruitful. All right. Now, we must also, verse 14, if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. So sometimes you wake up praying in tongues. You know why? Your spirit doesn't sleep. That's why it's important for you not to have a lot of foolishness on while you sleep. Because your spirit man is always awake. Your spirit man will never die when the body dies. Your spirit man will go back to the Lord from whence it is come. Your spirit man doesn't go in the casket. Your spirit man doesn't go in the grave. Only the body. The body is the only thing that will die. But the spirit and the soul will live forever. So what are you downloading? What are you internalizing? What are you taking in? So praying in tongues is what purifies the spirit man. Praying in tongues. Reading the word of God to your spirit man. Confessing the scriptures. It purges the spirit man. You must realize that you are a spirit living in a body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Everything can't play while you are asleep. Absolutely, Angie. See, I told my husband. Ooh, Rabbi, confirmation. Because your spirit, man, is open at all times. Watch this. And Holy Spirit is downloading to your spirit man at all times. Holy Spirit is downloading to your spirit man, downloading to our spirit man at all times. Because now while you're interceding, Holy Spirit makes intercession with groanings that cannot even be uttered, Romans 8. So Holy Spirit is making intercession without any of us participating. So when there is a download, when there is something to come into us that God wants us to know, he downloads it to our spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, Dr. Moss. He downloads it to our spirit man. So when we are praying in tongues, we're connecting, we are talking to God, we're edifying ourselves. But our mind... <laughs> Our mind is not engaged and it doesn't have to be. This bypasses the intellect. Science has proven that when we pray in tongues, when we sing in tongues, our mind, our intellect is not engaged. This is so good. Somebody share this on your page right now. Stop and share. Stop and share and, and tag some people. Tag your pastors, tag your leadership at your church, tag those people that you know in your family that need that still have confusion about this. Hallelujah. Woo, Rabbi God. Janet says, Lately I've been having dreams and I was speaking in tongues. Come on, I'm stirring it up in you. I'm stirring it up just like that, Angie. God confirmed it. Hallelujah. Stop and tag. Share, share, share. Don't just hoard this for yourself. Share it with your pastor. Share it with your elders. Get them in the school. Get it. Ain't no shame <laughs> until all have heard. Hallelujah. So when you pray in the spirit, Pray that you interpret. Pray that you interpret. I like that, Barbara. She said, mind is immobile. Absolutely. The mind, the natural human intellectual mind is not engaged when your spirit is praying and praying in tongues. Glory to God. Bypasses the intellectual engagement of your logic, of your belief systems, of your doubt, of your fear, because your spirit man is praying. Your spirit man is praying. 
Oh, hallelujah. And they're downloads, people. So now you pray to interpret. Now, hallelujah. Verse 15. I'm in 14 of Corinthians 1. What is the conclusion? And I will pray with the spirit. That's your tongues. And I will pray with the understanding. That's your language, your natural language. Come all the time. She said, I've been praying. The, I interpret prayer for the last few months. Then start. You start. Start. Just start. Pause. Pray. Pause. Listen. It may come directly here. It may come swoop straight out your mouth. Or you may feel a bubbling up in your in your belly. In your belly. All right? Don't get caught up in the how. Get caught up in the in the doing. Now, then prophecy, prophecy is the interpretation. Now, there are many ways that prophecy can come. Prophecy can come without tongues. You can be prophetic. You can have an enlightened. You can have a, a, a moment where you sense that there is something God wants to say. Now, you got to develop this, folks. You got to develop this. You can't watch TV all day and, and listen to all kinds of stuff all day and then want to prophesy. You got to cultivate an environment. You have to cultivate an environment. Environment. You have to cultivate an environment where Holy Spirit is actively engaging you and welcome. You ain't cussing and doing all that kind of stuff, and then you're gonna prophesy. You are not. You're not gonna be all in everything, gossiping and and being messy and being petty and. You're going to be the prophet in the hour. No. You have to give the environment. You have to participate in preparing the environment. You are the environment. As the spiritual leader of any spiritual house must nurture an environment. Why do you think we do praise and worship? Can I just ask y'all this? This just this, this comes to me. I just. Y'all lean in. I, 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 I got to say something. Our worship teams, our music ministry, put in hours of practice. Hours of preparation. God, this hurts my heart. Lean in because I got something to say. I got something to say. Our intercessors put in time to pray our music ministries put in effort to be proficient in their pedagogy we have organ keyboards drummers percussionists we have strings guitar violins flutists saxophonists our music ministries put in hours of time to come on Sunday in the worship, whether it's one service or whether you do multiple services. They are praying. They are listening to music. The Levites are gathering. They're sanctifying themselves. Let me tell y'all something. It Irks me. That's the summers. It irks me. I see it all the time. The environment is saturated. And there are some worship leaders and some Levites that can trigger. I'm telling you, the last four weeks at the cathedral. I, I'm telling you, my the shaka the shakas <laughs> have altered an environment that I come up and I'm I'm lost for what to do next because the presence of God is so heavy. 
All of this is done for what? For what? For what, Dr. Brooke Summers? What? Why is this? What? El Evangelist to keep, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I, 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 I don't like to boast, but Pastor James Shelton, Minstrel Annie B, Psalmist Ruth Sinclair, Charles Dove, Jacqueline, Vanessa Carter, Sonia Neal Anderson, Tanny McBeth. Listen, the best drummer, Wallace, percussion. I'm t I just look here, Marlon Curry. I can't tell you how proud I am. Sheila Donald Johnson, one of God's best. It irks me that after all the time that we put into it, Michael Jones, one of God's best. Stephanie Bennett Pride, one of God's best. And there's never any prophecy. Nobody ever comes forward. The environment is so rich for healing prayers, for miracles to happen right in that space. So why do we do praise and worship? Why do we take the time to cultivate praise and worship and not expect the spiritual gifts to be activated and operate? What are you doing? Let's just go in, pray a prayer, have, have the scripture, read the word, hear, hear Bible verse and go home. Why? Because the body of Christ is immobilized. There should be prophecy coming from them pews. There should be the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom coming from those pews. You have invited the doxa, the glory of God in. And the, you have built an environment. There should be prophetic word every Sunday. There should be the pews should be talking. Y'all sitting in these spaces where God is moving. Now we can talk later about the spaces where he ain't moving. But I want to talk about the places where he is moving. You have a phenomenal worship team. You have a phenomenal music ministry. You have a phenomenal Levitical team, the elders, the prayer warriors, the, the pastors, the, the word is being read. And, and the pews ain't saying nothing. Never. You ain't never going to say nothing. You don't never, you don't ever feel responsible to, to, to contribute a word. You just sitting there enjoying the tears rolling down your face and you never hear a prophet. You never speak in tongues to prophesy to your church. The shepherds of the house have invested financially, emotionally, and spiritually to create an environment so that the body of Christ gathered in that place are functioning members of the body. And you ain't never gonna, you ain't never heard nothing. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Oh, we love to, we love to, to blame the leaders. We love to blame the pastor. But what if the pastor did? I, I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about that group. I'm talking about the, y'all go to good churches. 
Your leaders have invested in time and money and invested in giftings to decorate the atmosphere, to set an atmosphere for the preaching of the word, for the move of the spirit, and you sit there like lumps on the log as consumers and never get activated. No, the pews is silent. The pews is quiet. You just keep sucking and drinking and eating and you never bring nothing back to the environment. You just come and take. The prophetic, the prophetic, the power of God is in you. If you want a better church, then you become a better Christian. You want a better church, then you become more spirit-filled. You become more activated. You should be driving to church saying, God used me today. God used me today. Holy Spirit used me today. Activate all the gifts of the spirit in me. Activate the prophetic. Activate my tongues. Activate my faith. You sit there every week and suck up all the air, all the heat when it's cold, all the worship, all the word, and take yourself home. And you did not contribute to the environment to edify the church. What do you do? You consume. What do you do? You sit there with your collars on and I'm telling you, it burns me up. Y'all got all these collars and titles and they ain't never prophesy. You shouldn't even be an elder if you don't prophesy. You shouldn't even be in the leadership if you don't speak in tongues and prophesy. You shouldn't even be an usher if you don't speak in tongues, why are you a ministry leader? And you and you don't you just sit there and suck up all the worship, you cry, you enjoy the Lord, and you never have a word for the church. You should be ashamed. You should be so you should be convicted right now. No body life whatsoever. No body life. Everything is on the leadership. And as soon as the leadership misses a layup, you got something negative to say. But you never have. Think about how many times you've been in church and the spirit of the Lord was so heavy and you did nothing. Folks, this is not the way it's supposed to happen. That's not the way it's supposed to happen where you wait on bishop or you wait on the leader or you wait on somebody. The atmosphere is being changed by the spirit of God. The leadership has invested in great worship leaders, invested in music, invested in, I'm not talking to, to you all that don't have the liberty and the privilege of having a spiritual environment that nurtures and cultivates a Holy Spirit uh, uh, praxis. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the rest of us that go to good churches, that have good leaders, that have great minstrels, where the Levites are activated by the Holy Ghost. And you sit there and never contribute. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be praying, God, help me to prophesy. This is an environment. God, give me a word. <laughs> give me a word. Give me a word today. Let oh, Don't let this environment be wasted on me. Let God speak to me. God, speak to me. Oh, God, give me a word, God. Give me a word. You sitting in 2024, talking about you nervous about interpreting. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of you. And some of you are pastors 
and you are afraid to prophesy. Some of you are, I'm ashamed of you. I am ashamed of you today. <laughs> you don't set the atmosphere. You don't lead the spiritual leader is the chief worship Levite in that house. You listen, and if you come into an environment and it's not nurturing you in the spirit, not nurturing you to grow, to prophesy, to perfect and become proficient in the gifts of the spirit, then why are you going to that church? Why do you keep going there? What is wrong with you? Good old, good old, good old songs coming from the belly, activating the spirit of God in that place. And God is moving and we run, we dance, we shout, and you don't have a word for the church. You don't see that as a problem. You can't blame the leadership for that. You can't blame the, you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. You cannot blame the pastoral leadership. If they're investing to create an atmosphere, if they're investing in the nurturing of your spirit man, if they are pouring into great psalmists, great musicians, great leaders, great worship teams, great music choirs, great instrumentation, great song selection, then why are you in the pew inactive? Whew. I'm telling you, I, I just don't understand. When you come to intercessory prayer, you should be prophesying. You should be praying and prophesying. Oh, it thrilled me Sunday when I got there, Saturday. Our intercessory prayer team goes in every Saturday at 12. And I wish everybody went, but they don't. But one Saturday, this coming Saturday, Saturday before the first Sunday, I asked the whole church to come. They don't all come. That's fine. But those that come, and I pray in the spirit, and we pray in the spirit, and then I wait for the prophetic. I wait. It thrilled my heart when two members of the intercessory prayer team text me on Saturday and say, the word of the Lord came. I want to hear that as a leader of the house. And I'm creating this. I'm creating an environment for you to prophesy. The Bible says in Acts 2 that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. I, I just need you all to not forget that. You're sitting there at the atmosphere. You're just wiping your tears. You were just enjoying it. Does it ever occur to you that this is the moment where now the Holy Spirit can empower you to contribute, that you can bring something to the table to edify the church? But you don't come, you don't come with that in your mind. So even, listen, even in an environment that is a continuationist environment, you can still be a cessationist. You sit around looking upside the wall for somebody else to prophesy. This is the whole blame game. Well, do I need an interpreter? You interpret. People speaking in tongues all around you. You interpret. You have the word of the Lord. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say, you walk up, whatever your protocol is, and you have a word. Maybe you had a dream that we you're supposed to share it with the body. That's a prophetic word. Or maybe you had an impression driving to church. That's a prophetic word. Do you ever think that you can prophesy, that you can bring a word, that you have something to contribute? It burns me. It burns me to see all of this wonderful effort being put in by our music ministries, by our intercessors, our ushers on time, dressed, ready, and don't nobody have a word. Oh, Jesus. 
that you all may prophesy. That you all may prophesy. That you all can enrich and edify the body. And this is what was happening in the Corinthian church. Some of y'all been singing praise and worship for years and have never given a prophetic word. Not even in rehearsal. Some of you have been a musician. You've been a psalmist. You've been a Levite. And you've never prophesied. You've got to ask yourself the question. What is going on with me? You just consume, consume, consume. But the spirit of the Lord that was given to you at Pentecost, you should prophesy. You should have a word to build the body. Those pews should be hot. The, the people in the pews are activated by praise and worship. Your giving is activated, not just money, but of your talent, of your gift. That's what makes a spiritual environment that the church is edified. That the church is edified. This is this this is a season, folks. Oh, the shine with and healing should take place. You don't never hear nobody. Listen, sometimes I get up and worship is so powerful. And 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 I I said, who who said come to the altar right now? It's not deep, folks. The environment is cultivated by worship and intercession for the Holy Spirit to be activated. Not just for some regular service, but you to say, oh, that was good. What happened in the service? While some are dancing, others can be prophesied. Oh, shame on you, Catherine. Shame on you. Shame on you for stopping. Shame on you for allowing your feelings to get hurt. If you have a word, give the word. You're not responsible for how it's done. You're responsible to contribute the word. This isn't deep, folks. This is not rocket science. The spiritual gifts are given for all to profit. Sometimes it's so rich in the continue. I say, those of you, and sometimes I start praying in the spirit, and then I'll prophesy. Because I know in that environment, God wants to speak. God wants to say something. And when he speaks like that, I, I put my little sermon up. Because God is speaking a fresh word. Because the environment has been cultivated. What is the purpose of praise and worship? What is the purpose of intercessory prayer? It is not to activate the pew to prophesy. To profit the church. <sighs> you always tell me, ain't nothing for me to do. Ain't nothing for me to do here. You don't need a title to prophesy. You don't need a collar to prophesy. You don't need, all you need is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We should be edifying the church. There should be body life, cultivation. That's why some of you get so, so uh, uh, you lose your, 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 your momentum in church because you ain't doing nothing. You don't feel like you have anything to contribute. I want to break that spirit over you right now. In the name of Jesus. Everybody in the Corinthian church was prophesied. Stop seeing that as a problem. Paul was just saying, look, all y'all prophesying, all y'all speaking in tongues, the spiritual gifts are in operation. Let me just set some order to it. It wasn't a rebuke to stop. It was simply a correction to align it, to give it some order. Oh, Rabbi Kashke. Oh, Sheikha, my God, I praise you. Oh, Tidi Ashenda, Rabbi Kushke. It wasn't a rebuke to stop. It was Paul didn't tell him to stop prophesying. Paul didn't tell him to stop healing. He didn't tell him to stop speaking in tongues. He said, just put some order to it. Oh, shut up. It was order, not oppression. But when you are cessation, as you look for anything to make it things stop, stop it. You have to stop saying, God, uh, the church don't believe in this. And the church, well, here's my question to you. Do you believe it? 
You have blamed leaders forever for you being inactive. You have blamed the church forever for you being inactive. Or do you believe in the Holy Ghost? Do you believe in the gifts of the Spirit? Do you believe that you can prophesy? I got to go. <laughs> that all may prophesy. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to stop it until all have heard the marvelous works of this precious gift, Holy Spirit. Oh, I come against all of the foul, bad teaching that you received. That, in, that has, has made you immobile. Come against it now in the name of Jesus. You got so much to say about what they ain't doing, what they ain't doing. And my pastor, this, my, you, can't, you can't believe how many comments I read all day. It's always about the church. Don't nobody say, I should have prophesied. I should have walked up and given a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. I, sh I saw that person sick. I should have laid hands on them. I saw that situation in the grocery store. I saw it on my job and I did nothing about it. When will you own it? Oh, Rabbi Hashem. <laughs> Woo, I got to go. I got to go. Listen, join me tonight. I tell you, I promise you. Yay! Until all have heard and that you may pro in the last days, you all will promise. And we're in these last days. I got to go. <laughs> Teacher!